Today on BioTalk, Patty Olinger, the executive director of GBAC and myself, we're talking about something important in the news today. You might've seen it. It's called the bird flu. And when you think of a disease like that, maybe you don't correlate it with impacting people. However, it looks like there's the first human case of this bird flu. I heard it was in Colorado, I believe. Patty, have you heard this news? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's the first human case here in the United States that they've documented. And um, it's something that we should pay attention to, um, you know, as far as what that means for us. So, so is it something that's happened in other parts of the world? You know, there has been a few cases that we've seen over the, over time. This is again, the first, first case in the United States. What we're starting to see is that there are more cases that the USDA and that public um, health officials have been able to document in our flocks, as far as bird, bird flu in our, our chicken flocks, as well as in wild birds. And that becomes concerning, especially when we see a, what we call a spillover event into a human population. Uh, so that's when we start to pay notice um, as far as, is it a high risk right now? No, you know, one case is not necessarily, and we haven't seen that human to human transfer, but that's one of the fears. Um, when you think about pandemic preparedness and before we had COVID, everybody thought it was going to be a bird flu that was going to jump species into the human population and then potentially be a human to human transmission, um, concern. And so paying close attention to this is really important. So, so Patty, uh, some might say this is not really a big deal, but I heard that the United States government is doing something with vaccines to, with this in mind. What do you know about that? So I know little, but on the other hand, it's one of those things that with flu, uh, there are actually vaccine flu centers and research centers in, in the United States at like universities say, that are doing research on different types of flus so that in the event that there, let's say, was an outbreak like this, um, that they are really ready to move forward on a vaccine. Now, we do this every single year with different flu vaccines, as we know, that flu season. And, you know, as we're starting to look at uh, the possibility of an avian flu being able to jump species into the human population, um, I can guarantee you that the government and our, you know, pharmaceutical companies are paying very close, uh, close watch on this. And it's, it, it is part of their research programs. Would you say, Patty, that because of the coronavirus and how it, how it came about, that concerns people more so now with the flu, like this avian flu, this bird flu? Uh, you know, that's a, I think what has happened is, you know, prior to coronavirus, as you know, I wrote an article for you mm -hmm. that basically talked about a pandemic was coming. We thought it was really going to be a flu, a flu pandemic. And, you know, that then it was coronavirus. I, what has really happened is it's brought I would say to the awareness of the general population that something like this can happen. Okay. We got to remember those lessons that we've learned because the reality is that how we would protect ourselves from say a pandemic avian influenza are very similar, if not exactly how we would protect ourselves from SARS-CoV-2. You know, um, if there's a vaccine, get vaccinated. If we're looking at, you know, washing our hands, not touching our face, uh, all of the things that we've thought about and that we've had to had to practice really need to be put in place if we had a pandemic flu outbreak. Okay, last point. Is this issue, this bird flu issue, something the cleaning industry should pay attention to? Absolutely. Um, again, you know, um, I've talked about for a long time, air is, you know, and cleaning of air is really important. That indoor air quality for our health, our wellness, our well-being is so very important, but surfaces matter. And when we're starting to look at flu or other things, um, you know, if we touch a, a surface that's contaminated, touch our eyes, nose, and mouth, then we have the potential of becoming infected. And so high touch point 
uh, disinfection, a proper cleaning. And I say, I, I always talk about hygienic cleaning. It's not just cleaning for aesthetics, making it look pretty, making it smell nice. Well, that's important to many of us. We want it to there. We can do it in such a way so that we're also doing it correctly and hygienically cleaning. It is, you know, we need to rethink the way we're cleaning and we need to do it correctly. Absolutely. Thank you.